Let's talk about the political situation here at the uh, dawn of the North German Federation. Uh, lots of possibilities here. Of, of course, I've got truces with Denmark and Austria. I can't go romping through their area. France, I'm not ready to go in on either. However, uh, this is a weird thing. The game has given me a return state claim on Wallonia, and that includes Luxembourg. I could go in and demand these lands, but in a very unhistorical way, I don't see what's German about these and not Flanders and Netherlands. If we want to form a, a Gross Deutschland with all of the low countries, Holy Roman Empire style, then sure, we, we could put those claims on there, but I really don't buy into the one for Wallonia or Luxembourg. It, it, yes, Luxembourg has a significant population of North Germans. It's 40% of the population, but it uh, that, that, that's a tiny little slice there. Uh, if I look at Gelra here, it's, it's also got North German. Am I going to demand that as well? Huh? But uh, no, I don't think that I should. Even though the game is giving me the opportunity, I don't feel right historically. Now, I did play through another round of... Uh, this were, yeah, I took advantage of that, had a war with England over Belgium and a war with Russia over Luxembourg, but I just felt wrong about that. One, the, the map looks weird with Germany sticking its tongue out that way. It, it looks much better if all the low countries are brought in, just a nicer border. But two, why would Germany want to jeopardize its relationship with England? Uh, we've got this good thing going here. We've got a trade agreement. If we get our alliances up well, we can form a defensive pact and build on that. We still have the Duchy of Schleswig to argue with Denmark over, and we still have the question of South Germany and whether or not we look into Austria. Okay, Austria, this is a very interesting question here. The, the, the nation of Austria is teetering. I know that in a few years it's going to be the Empire of Austria-Hungary, or the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, it's going to split there. Uh, the ethnic pressures are building. I know this as someone who's played through this particular timeline, as well as historically that's coming. So what about the German population within Austria? How do they feel about a potential Großdeutschland? The answer is, as long as Austria is strong, and a, a major power, they like the idea of Großdeutschland with Vienna leadership. If it's being led from Berlin, they're not thrilled about that. They see themselves as Austrians. But if Austria weakens significantly, then they see themselves as Germans, not Austrians, and that it becomes a natural move for them to unify with a larger Germany. This was the sentiment in Austria following the First World War, where they thought, okay, we're going to lose Hungary and Czechoslovakia, uh, Yugoslavia is out, we lost bits to Italy, it, everything's gone except for what's left. And that was Austria, for sure. And then there were questions about Bohemia. And Bohemia has had a complicated relationship between the Czechs and the Germans throughout its history. Moravia had a, a German-Czech population difference, but because there was still a, a widespread serfdom and agricultural economy in Moravia, they never really came into deep conflict with each other the way they did in Bohemia. In Moravia, they were just pretty much everybody was poor, ruled over by absentee landholders, and they all had the same situation. So not much going on there. But in Bohemia, we have a situation where and this looks really weird, I'm talking directly to a white space, but bear me out here. Bohemia had an agricultural interior, which was largely Czech, and then a mountainous exterior where there was tons of mining going on, which was largely German-held. And I, I, I was talking about this with my wife, and she said, oh, so the Czechs are hobbits and the Germans are dwarves? <sighs> yeah, if, that, if it helps you to imagine that, make it a Lord of the Rings analogy, let, let's go ahead and do that. But I'm not making that analogy. Please don't make comment. Don't don't get upset. I'm not making it. My wife made it. So go comment on her page if you can find it. Ha ha ha. But it, it, so we have two totally different industries dominated by the different ethnicities. 
then we see the industrialization happening from the mineral-based economy in the mountainous areas and the uh, lagging interior here with the agriculture. But as the mountainous industries grew, they drew in peasants from the interior to work in these mining areas. And the German owners of the mines, because Austria was a German-led nation up until like 1849 when they started reforming some a few things, but prior to that, the, the, the German business owners in these areas, these mountainous areas, could demand that their workers speak German at the work site. And the way they counted the census in, in, in Austria was the language spoken at work, not the language spoken at home. So it's the work language rather than the hearth language. And if you spoke German at work, you were a German. And then that determined German representation in the parliament, and there were some political ramifications. Uh, Austria also had a, a, a tiered voting system based on land and wealth. So the poor Czechs had very little representation in their own parliament, and the rich Germans had more representation. Also within the city, the Germans had special, or city of Prague, I should say, the, which was the main city of Bohemia. The Germans had special privileges due to culture, wealth, etc. And that also inflated their power within the city of Prague. But over time, the Czechs began to grow wealthier, not only from good wages paid in the mining jobs, but they also developed the banking industry in Prague. And when the Czechs developed a banking industry, then suddenly we saw these Czechs who started to qualify for these property and wealth requirements to vote, and it increased their representation. This was alarming in the eyes of the Germans who wanted to maintain control of the area, thinking that if if we do maintain control, then we reduce the chance of the whole thing splitting out and becoming a separate nation ruled by the Czechs, where they felt they would have a lesser position because they were forcing the Czechs to have a lesser position, and they, you know, whether that's right or wrong, it was a fear they had. And yes, within the within Bohemia, there were Czech voices calling for restoration of the ancient kingdom of. Uh, Bohemia, which was Bohemia, Moravia, and Silesia. Although Silesia had a large Polish population, so they, that was a bit iffy there. But they were saying that there were uh, laws that made this an inviolable combination and that they should never be ruled the way they are, and that, yes, there was the, the, the matter of the Czech crown being inherited by the King of Hungary, which was then inherited by the King of Austria after the Battle of Mohacs, uh, but they, they still wanted to regenerate Hungary as a separate kingdom, and when they saw, or sorry, Czech, uh, they went Bohemia as a separate kingdom, when they saw Hungary become a separate kingdom within the Austrian Empire, they were very hopeful that they would get the same treatment, and when that failed to materialize, they increased in their agitation and push for either freedom or freedom within Austria, and freedom within Austria was the more common refrain there. But I, I bring all this up to show that there are tensions within Bohemia not so much Moravia, but they kind of go together if you want them to. But Bohemia being a very rich province, if we take a look at the overview, it is 12% of the Austrian GDP. And because there's a weakening in Austria and the thought that there could be a potential loss of Bohemia, either through rebellion, because at the same time that Hungary was going out, the Italian provinces were on their way out from Austria, could the rest of Austria fall apart after 1848? Now, we're not yet at 1848. We have that going for us. But it could still be argued that something could happen here, and there could be an appeal from the Germans within these areas who were, they were very, very much seeing themselves as German. If Austria wasn't going to provide that kind of stability that they needed to maintain their authority, then an appeal to Germany would make sense. And knowing that if Germany acquired these lands, it would definitely be a German-led group, that it would not be divided between uh, the Hungarians, the Romanians, the Poles, the Ukrainians, the Croatians, the Italians, the Slovenes, etc., etc. It would be German-dominated, the same way that parts of Poland were German-dominated. 
what I'm getting at here is I can see more of a case for a German adventure into Bohemia and by association Moravia as part of a reaction to weakening Austrian control and that that might actually be something that the Russians would agree to if the Germans had a quid pro quo. The Russians could look the other way over Bohemia and Moravia if the Germans supported Russian ambition in other areas. And the Germans were not opposed to Russian expansion in the Balkans. They didn't really mind that. It was, that was more of an Austrian, British, and French reaction. That's why the uh, Crimean War involved those parties. It, not Austria directly, but it was still indirectly involved. Uh, but Germany was able to maintain a, a pro-Russian stance through much of that uh, conflict there. Uh, but, yeah, Russia could support it. France and England may be disappointed about that, but it doesn't really threaten them directly the way a Belgian move would. If Germany went for Belgium, yes, I know, even though the game allows it, and even though the AI may not get involved, I'm involved. I'm the HI, the human intelligence. It's saying, just because I can go against Belgium doesn't mean I should. Instead, the plan is, let's keep an eye on Austria. If they weaken... In order to form Germany, we may be looking at Bohemia and Moravia and not Alsace-Lorraine. This could be an interesting development here. I'm going to keep playing it this way. I'm not going to take Belgium. We're going to focus on Bohemia and Moravia. I'll go ahead and unpause. Hooray. And yes, we have Central Archives, and we'll just keep going there, get the more stuff there. We got branching out. All right, that's good there. Uh, let's go ahead and anticipate the future and carry on forward. We do have to build some more engines because we are short desperately, but we'll we'll get through this somehow, you and I. Uh, as it is, there's not much else to do because we do have that truce. Oh, good, we patronize romanticism. Well, let's study realism. Uh, our truce with Austria has 17 months left, and our truce with Denmark has... Uh, three years left. So we've got some time to wait here. We could go against Austria first, or we could go against Denmark first after building up our economy. And do we need to build our military? Hmm. Let's take a look at that. We've got 8171 for our military. France is 8530. They are much stronger. If they don't like us, we're in trouble. The Russians got 6,400. If they get together with the 5,400 Austrians, we uh, I don't like that. I, I, we need a stronger military. Of course, we are working on that right now. If we take a look at our buildings, and yes, we've got the four pages of mostly naval building. We are going to build out that fleet and then logging camps. We've got a few other things here with lots of universities on tap and then more navy. Yes, eight pages of buildings there. <laughs> um, lol, if you want, I'm thinking ahead. Uh, wait, how long was it going to take to build all that? I have, yeah, okay, only 116 weeks. So that's, you know, like two years. We could work with that and then build up our army. And, okay, we don't get dedicated police force. Sorry, guys, that's embarrassing. Oh, well, were we trying to get that? Uh, apparently not our... Economy's doing fine there. Let's go ahead and cancel some of these trade routes that are not doing much of anything. Wow, that's a jumpy move there. But definitely increasing the military strength of Germany. So in case we have objections from great powers, we don't have to back down from our plays. We will prevent those objections by having a stronger military. And the adventure will go against Schleswig-Holstein and Austria, if Austria is weak. What if Austria is not weak? Well, then there's always Alsace-Lorraine. How can we justify Alsace-Lorraine as it is now? Well, let's, let's look at that there. Uh, France does have a rivalry with England, so England would probably be much more open to the idea of Germany knocking France down a peg than moving into Belgium and the Netherlands. All right, we've got that area there. We will have, oh, we got amicable relations with England. Let's let's go ahead and, while we're talking about England, how about 
we give you a obligation, England, and we make that... A, oh, we already owe them an obligation. Darn it. All right, well then, if you want to make a defensive pact with us, England, we're, we're all ears. What about old Russia here? Could we form one with them? Oh, no, we owe them an obligation, too, over the whole Austria war thing. I get it, I get it. All right, well, we'll come back to them later. Uh, but as it is, England would probably be cooler with us taking Alsace-Lorraine. We do have a claim on that, right? Uh, well, or do we have a truce with them right now? Oh, no, we have too good a relationship with France right now. Ah, uh, well, I know how to take care of that. Uh, just start taking out other things. But it, it, as it is, as it is. It's a French Republic. Who's running it? It's labor unions, intelligentsia, rural folk. These are essentially proto-communists or proto-socialists, whatever you want to call them, but they are definitely politically uh, revisionist. And do I want to do this to the industrialists? Actually, yeah, we, 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 could, we could spare that. Make everybody happy. All right. Uh, as I was saying, uh, the, the British themselves, yeah, the intelligentsia are good there, but the petty bourgeoisie and industrialists probably don't like the uh, rural folk and labor unions that are running around over here. So they could probably feel okay about that. Uh, the Austrians would hate it, but deal with it, Austria. And Russia probably wouldn't care much either. So I could see expansion in this sphere as something that we could either have the other powers dislike and ignore, or the other powers be okay with and say, yeah, go ahead, Germany. You do your thing. You can become a stronger power because as Germany increases in power, Austria slides down. So we still have a balance of power in Europe. It's just that it's not the one the Austrians planned on where they would be like number two or three and Germany down here at number five. Can, can, we, can we get the numbers? There we go. It would be now Germany around two or three and Austria sliding down. Now, even if Germany becomes number one in terms of prestige, GDP, population, the United Kingdom still has its massive empire. They're, they're cool with that. They don't feel threatened. Although Germany building up a big navy, that is kind of threatening-y. That may be something that they don't want us to do. <sighs> but I'm doing it anyway. And doing it as someone who can be allied with England. If Germany and England have a strong alliance, that makes a stronger Germany a little more palatable in the eyes of the British. So maybe what I need to do here is stop improving relations with France and to begin to damage them. Let's, let's work that one the other way. So by the time we have our army built out, we'll be ready to do some rock and roll. Uh, let's put a petit bourgeoisie guy in there. Yes, I'm promoting him for political concerns, not military ones. <laughs> uh, and we've got a, yeah, we had a few barracks in there that the other German states were building out. That's fine with me. And eventually we are going to have to come to grips with how the different buildings that we've inherited have different levels of productivity and that there may be some of these that we want to shut down in order to improve an industry. Oh boy, chemical bleaching. We're going to uh, make some paper. And I keep, this is so, I wish these bars were wider so I wouldn't accidentally go off the map and scroll. Yes, you can turn on scroll locking. No, I don't want to turn on scroll locking. Let's not get into that argument there. Uh, but as it were, there are, a, there's going to be a few of these buildings where I can see that you know, they're, they're red because we're, we're building them out, but then others are red because, uh, well, okay, military shipyards are different, but this motor industries here, it's not doing well after the unification. Maybe we should shut it down and give better prices for other areas. Our, our lead mines are just bad. Uh, or let them sit around and see if they just do better on their own. We, you know, we don't have to close things off, but we could just to keep workers out of them. It's a thought. Uh, but the best way to keep workers out of a bad industry is to build good industry. And I'd like to focus on that for a while. All righty. Well, we've been going for about 20 minutes, and I have talked a lot about Belgium and the Bohemia Moravia. If you are someone who lives in the Czech Republic, please understand I am not at all anti-Czech. Uh, 
I've seen I, I, I've seen and listened to a number of uh, Czech movies and rock bands and things. It's a great culture. Please don't get mad at me. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some cross-border investing. All right. Of course, in version 1.7, it's going to be even better. Ooh, Bavaria wants a defensive pact. That's good since they kind of stood with Austria before. I'm trying to wrap things up. Maybe I should just keep it on pause. We'll go ahead and do that. We've got plenty of diplomacy. Anyway, uh, yeah, they got nothing against Czechs at all. Uh, but I think geopolitically in this game, if Austria weakens, that's an opportunity for Germany. And forming Germany is a matter of seizing opportunities. And even though the game has given me one here in Wallonia, I reject that on historical grounds. Just because the game says I can doesn't mean I should. But I do see a potential grab here, which honestly is something I tend to do as I play Germany slash Prussia anyway. Uh, yeah, we could do that. But the justification has to be Austria's weakened. If Austria is strong, this is a bed of nails we don't want to lie down on. With that in mind... Let's go ahead and wrap up this one so I can do another one later on and hope all your diplomatic plays go the way you want them to.